All right, guys. So today we're going to um, show you. Uh, okay, it's fine. Just keep on rolling. I just want to fuse them. Okay, so today we don't have a snake for you to show, but actually. All right, guys. So today we don't have a snake that I'm going to show you, but today we're going to have a spider. Now you see, I'm here in Africa, and um, in this area, it's very um, common to find what we call the golden brown baboon spider. Now, it's a tarantula species, but unfortunately a highly endangered one. So we can just kneel down here, because I got one specimen already put on the ground for the camera here. Check this one out. This is the notorious, but also kind of unknown, golden brown baboon spider. Now what you see here is a defensive position. So it's basically showing me back off. And you can see that it's rearing up and right here in the front it has its fangs. Right here, I don't know if you can see that. So right there are basically the fangs. Just like with the venomous snake and they're so big that the spider is actually folding them underneath its body. And of course like spiders they have eight legs, like here's one, two, three, four and these ones are basically just for um, detecting anything that's in front of the spider and also they help when it comes to feeding so they basically um, hold the prey and shove it into the mouth it's not calming down maybe if it calms down come on buddy so we can see its proper colors from this angle there you go that's a good spider look at this now that's what i call it the golden brown baboon spider beautiful gold and black and brown colors on this one and look at this, this is what we call the carapax look at the coloration here it's just like a sun you know absolutely magnificent so as I said, this is an endangered species here in the area. That is of course mainly because of habitat destruction. So people tend to build their houses in this area. When it comes to agricultural building houses, they basically destroy the home of the spider. And it's very problematic here in this area especially. I'm trying to handle it now here. If it calmed down a little bit, come on. You see it's a little bit more calm now. I hope so. so you, can... Ooh, you see that? All right, gotta be careful there, they're really quick. They're also ambush predators, which means that they will oftentimes just wait on their hole. And when there's like a little cricket coming along, they jump out of that hole and just overpower that cricket. So this species here is basically a burrowing species. That is why it's so um, difficult to save the species from habitat destruction. Because you can see here, I got like a model. So this right here is basically what we put inside the holes. You can see, basically the spider builds the hole and this is its chamber where it lives. So you can see it's just about 20 centimeters deep. They basically built this hole six years. So we would say basically say like five to seven years. It takes the spider to just build this hole. And after that time they built the hole, they unfortunately forget how to do it. So they lose their instinct and their mechanism to build these holes. Here's another one so you can get an idea of them. So they almost look identical. This one's a little bit more elongated, but also about 20 centimeters deep. And this is why it's so bad because once you destroy their home, they um, basically are just right here in the open, you know, if you save them. Otherwise, you might just kill them in their hole. And as I said, they lose their mechanism. So relocating becomes a real problem because if, you, if say, someone wants to build its house here, and we find a spider hole, we get the spider out like this one here. What's going to happen is basically you can't just take the spider and put it here. Because the spider is now um, vulnerable. Birds of prey or any other um, animal can basically just easily make a snack out of the spider right now. So therefore, they are very endangered and they might as well just become extinct because of that reason. So like all tarantulas, they're harmless to people. So they can of course bite, they're all venomous. but um, it's uh, just like a bee sting pretty much, but still you saw the fangs earlier and they can go through you like this whack, And they just stab you and every prey that they overpower So it's not a nice bite So it took bites from anacondas or something or from snakes It's easy because they have very very small teeth like really razor sharp thin teeth These ones right here are really big fangs, so they really hurt a lot and they put a hole right in your hand um, But as I said the venom has basically no real effect on us so prey that they would usually eat is um, crickets, grasshoppers, and really big tarantulas in other areas would also overpower something like mice. You know, but these guys here, they grow to about six centimeters of body length. So I reckon this specimen here, if you look from here to here, that's where you measure the body length. 
is about maybe uh, five centimeters. So it's almost like a fully grown specimen. And an interesting fact about this species also is that males actually reach sexual maturity with 15 years and females with around five years and they have a life span of about 25 years. So you can imagine, you know, it's another big factor of why the species is endangered is um, that you have to have like at least a 15 year old male spider so they will be able to reproduce. Really unfortunate. So here you can see the spider now in my hand. And look at the size, so it's a pretty small tarantula species. So they usually, um, tarantulas get quite big about like I say body length about eight centimeters, sometimes even um, nine centimeters. So the size of these animals, you can see they're really big. So people are always afraid of tarantulas. They say, oh wow, you know, they're so crazy and big. But actually it's a small animals so you have to be afraid of, the small spiders because they kill prey with their venom. These guys rather kill their prey just by overpowering them. And the way they're going to kill prey is they're gonna be uh, in an ambush position and then when prey comes close enough they will strike so hard and fast and basically use those little, they look like legs in the front, um, those little um, parts of their, those little legs in the front to basically grab the prey and then they will put it right in their fangs. It's like a fog stabbing the prey. And then they'll basically almost kill the prey just with the force of those fangs themselves, not even with the actual venom. But of course they have venom, which is mainly also there for digestion, not for killing, and also as a defensive mechanism. So some tarantulas, sorry buddy, some tarantulas, they can actually also flick their hairs on their abdomen so it's irritating on the skin and also when you breathe them in, but these species here they can't. So you can see it's just trying to get away from me here, trying to walk off. And I just love this spider because of those colors. Look at them, absolutely beautiful colors. And now you see it's like settled down now, settled down nicely. And also you can see all those hairs on its body. That's very incredible if you understand the function of those hairs, because they are the spider's main sense organ so they don't see they have eight eyes but actually they don't really see well they use those hairs on their body as detection so you can see my hand next to the spider the spider doesn't see my hand it doesn't hear it's deaf but what it does is basically when I move my hand like this it knows exactly that my hand is moving and where it is because of the vibrations in the air so um, it's absolutely phenomenal this is why you never like blow air at spiders or even scorpions because it's like shouting in our ear. So there'll be a fly in the air right now or a grasshopper from here hopping right on the spider and the spider would catch it mid-air just because of detection from the vibrations in the air which is absolutely wild. So that's the only thing they have basically you know they don't really see well they don't smell they don't hear but it's those hairs on their body that they use for detecting prey predators basically anything and there's of course a lot of um, effort to be put in to save the species for example you need to learn a little bit more about them research must be done so we can actually try to understand and better protect the species because otherwise it will probably be gone in about 10 to 15 years from the wild because of this habitat destruction which is just um, a very bad um, situation for the spider, you know, but of course not only this spider is the only species here that's endangered, we have plenty of them, you know, but still, you know, this is an incredible species, beautiful colors, beautiful spider, nothing we need to be afraid of.